get started early, huh? Waiting on my guest. Oh my, Gary, where are you, brother? Where are you? Waiting on your dot. Testing one, two. All right, all right. Eastern time. That's on the east, and that's fire. Don't burn yourself. Creep on by that fire real slow, because I can't have you getting burned on my show. What's good, people? Man, I'm so glad you're here. Dig this. This is the Mad Just Music Show. You've arrived on the scene. You know where you are. Ha <laughs> ha. 
and I'm him. Give me a little applause. I don't mind if you do. I don't mind if you do. It's good. I mean, I know I say that every week. A little applause is a good thing. And uh, I'm Jeff Taylor. That's my government name. That's what I go by. Hope you can hear me all right and everything is good. I have an awesome uh, guest today that I'm excited to bring to you folks. And he's got a long history. And uh, wow, he's a super talented guy. None other than Dr. Gary Hines. We're going to get into that in just a second. Real quick, though, I want to jump into a news bit before we start this show, because as you can see, uh oh, what are we doing there? Come back to me. Stand by. A little technical difficulty. That's OK. We don't fret none. Hold on a second here. Oh, my goodness. Tell you what. Anyway, the show is live. And when the show is live, anything could happen. And we know that to be true. Anyway, my little news bit is about. Lady Gaga, she's a dog lover, and I love dogs too. I mean, nothing wrong with loving dogs, okay? But uh, somebody then took this girl's dogs, and then she loved them dogs. And I can't say that's wrong to love your dogs like that, but she loved them dogs because she paid somebody $500,000 to return them. That is a wonderful thing, and I love my dog. Anybody that knows me and my dog knows that I love my dog. That's all good. Nothing like having a dog you love, but that's a lot of money. You know, check your dog walker. Make sure he's he's good. I'm just saying. I'm just putting that out there. Anyway, enough about that. Enough about that. I got a I got a I got a guest today. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest. My guest, you know, he is. Uh, well, how do you, how do you explain this guy? He really is a, a talent beyond measure. Because Gary Hines is somebody that I respect because he is a genius. I mean, without question, this man you're looking at right there. He's the leader of the sounds of blackness. He's the musical director, the genius, the songwriter, producer behind it. I've seen him organize more people together in the name of unity and music and blackness and righteousness than, than anybody that I've ever seen in politics. This is a man that really gets it in when it comes to you know bringing his people together, especially when he has an opportunity to do it in the name of music in the name of love. I mean, without question, the sounds of blackness is, you know who they are. You probably heard, when you hear this. The blackness. Well, come on, you know what time it is. Yeah, it's time to bring the man into the show. So I'm gonna do that right now without without any further delay. Let me, let me bring in Gary Hines right here. He's looking away. Gary, I know you see me. And turn your speakers down because I can hear your echo over there. Turn your speaker down. Can you hear me all right, Doc? Say hi to the folks, Gary. Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, what's up, my brother? Man, it's so good to see you, Gary Hines. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gary Hines, the producer, songwriter, musical director of the Grammy Award winning Sounds of Blackness. I mean, Gary, I'm so excited to have you on my show, man. I'm really thrilled to see you today, brother. How you been? Oh, man, bless you at all. The feeling is more than mutual, my brother. Thank you so much. On behalf of Sounds of Blackness, man, nothing but love for you. You already know. Man, look, that group, man, is some kind of an amazing group because you look at all these people. I, you know what? I was I was joking with Carrie when he was on my show the other day that we did some work at my house a few times, you know, and me and you working side by side. And then the sounds are coming to my house. And I went to a I went to a party in the neighborhood afterwards. And one of my neighbors pulled me aside and he says, so I hear the sounds of blackness are working at your house now. And I go, well, how would you know that? He says, well, I could tell by all those cars, those 30 or 40 cars on your lawn. So. That's my sounds of blackness at my crib story. <laughs> Gary, I hope you can hear me okay. Gary, I hope you are not calling me on a dial-up line, bro. Say it ain't so. <laughs> Gary, Doc, see, you got your speakers on. And it's causing feedback right now in your set. I can hear it. You got some, you got some earbuds? You can... I can't hear you, no doubt. I love this technology. Now, Gary, I love Gary. Gary, you calling me on a dial-up, and you know it's true. But it's all, it's all good because, you know what, uh, here's the thing I wanted to talk to the people about a little okay. bit. Here. Here's the thing. Here's the stuff, man. Here's just some of the stuff that you guys have done, bro. I mean, it's been it's been amazing, the work that you have put in with this group. And I just want to be able to highlight this point out to people that, 
we've worked on all kinds of stuff together from the Rosa Parks stuff, the soundtracks, albums, the Apostle, Panther, Posse, Whistle with the Wind with Tom Jones and Andrew Lloyd Webber. I mean, my goodness, Gary, we put in some work. Yeah, brother. Gary, you froze up on me, Doc. It's okay, but then there's Posse. Look at all this stuff that, all this work that went into this. Anyway, I'm trying to work with you, Doc, but you called me up on a dial-up. Remember John Henry, Gary? Talk to me about that. Talk to me about that. <laughs> that delay is serious, I know. Because you're listening to your speakers, Doc. You hear me now? I hear you a little bit, but you're cracking up. I'm not uh, sure. I'm uh, not sure which microphone. Yeah. I, you know what? I gotta. I realize what I have to do now. I have to send a technical team to Minneapolis yeah. in order to get my Minneapolis brothers on the air correctly. Oh, you hear me all right, brother? I hear you breaking up a little bit now because your connection is. I can tell just by looking at it. Is uh, I'm doing some some analytics on the side there. It's just a just a slow connection, and you're listening to your speakers over there. <laughs> as opposed to your heads, as opposed to your heads. But hold on, hold on. What else can I? What else can I get into? Anyway, here's my guy. This is Gary Hines. This is, you know, the Sounds of Blackness albums. You know, you know, you know this song here. When you hear that music, you know S. Gary and the Sounds of Blackness. You know, you know, you know what time it is. You know, Gary put in work, and I'm just happy to have been able to be in some of those sessions, working side by side with Gary. But this is what I got to see on a regular basis when I was working with Gary. That's just the genius of Gary. That's him. He's not praying or anything like that. He's literally directing about 30 people out there in the studio at the same time because he knows everybody's part, which is which is an amazing attribute, you know, for somebody to have. We live, Gary. My brother called me up on a dial up on a dial up line. That's Gary, though. That's my dog. Gary, I love you, man. You know I love you, man. I'm just giving you a hard time. But here's the Here's the Gary Hines that I know. And this is the this is the focus brother that was always, you know, in the studio, prepared, group organized, you know, and just pulling me into the fold and give me an opportunity to to be a part of the magic that he was making. And I'm gonna tell you, Gary was Gary is one of the hardest working guys in the business. I mean, there's not many people that work hard, and Gary, I gotta give it to you, Gary. You, you work hard. Gary's a hard working brother because you know he really he will get in there and he'll put in work and um and he and he expects the same from everybody. And I know you're froze because your lips shouldn't be still doing that right now on the screen. You want to, man, on a dialogue line. Ooh, that, <laughs> ooh, that delay is so serious, Gary. See, because you're listening to those speakers. It's okay. It's all right, bro. You know I love you. Anyway, so what you've been working on? You want to talk to me a little bit? A little bit? You want to try? I'm gonna be quiet and give you a second to try to talk to me a little bit. <laughs> Oh, Gary, I'm not sure whether you're laughing at my joke from just now or my joke from a long time ago, but I appreciate the laugh. My goodness. I'm going to hang up on you, Doc, and you have to call me back. I'm going to hang up. Gary Hines, I love my brother, but my brother definitely called me from a dial-up. And if you know Gary Hines, he will call you from a dial-up line. He literally plugged in uh, a, 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 a modem somewhere, uh, AOL modem, and that thing went to ringing and buzzing and then so forth. And then he jumped on the line, man. I'm so thrilled about that. Yo, welcome to my studio. This is my overhead where I'm trying to run this show. And the only piece that's struggling is the dial-up, the connection. And depending on who you are and how you dial in, you know, Sometimes it's better than others, but I definitely recommend headphones. It's the key. It's the only way we can get this done. So all I can do is try to continue moving along with the show and share a little bit of what I have going on here. Part of that is some of the stuff that I want to share with you, like my social media, where you can get me at if you're interested in reaching me and talking to me about this show. Gary is definitely the bomb without question. And that's one of the comments that we just we just got into the show. And I want to I want to be able to see that. But I'm not seeing it. Anyway, you can get me on social media and hopefully Gary's going to call me back with a clearer line. But I should have had him go to a coffee shop or something. See, I know Gary. I know Gary. I know he called me from a dial up. It's OK. It's a dial up line. 
it's that analog phone line, the one with the cord stuck in the wall. Like, that's what Gary called me from. And I love that brother, though. He's super talented. I mean, the guy is a writer, producer, singer, songwriter. He's done so much for so many people. You can't help but love the guy. I know he was instrumental in helping me along in my career, and I've been uh, I've been forever, ever grateful. But some of the new stuff that Gary is doing right now includes working on, you know, over 50 years with the sounds. I mean, he's literally been the spearhead of this group forever. Let's try to bring Doc back in. Uh-oh. Doc brought some help with him. Let's, 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 let's get serious here. We got, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hey, Gary. Hold on. Hold on. Hey. Buddy. Hold on. Come, in, come on in. Hey, Gary. Yes, sir. We Ooh. cooking with grease, baby? Cooking totally. See? I'm so happy. I don't know. <laughs> See? You good? Um, man, you know what? We're in like Flint, baby. Man, it, it's worth the effort, Gary, to talk to you, see your face. It's worth the effort to me, man, to share this stuff with the people, man. Oh, thank you so much, brother. You know, the feeling's more than mutual. We apologize for the technical difficulties. And, uh, but we, we're back in the saddle. What, what did we used to say? You know, uh, we'll be in the, in the midst of a session or prepping for a session and, and, and something wasn't working. Uh, we would just say is one button away. Remember that? One button one. away from not, from being okay. Oh. From being okay, That's I know right. right. That that is a, that is how it is. <laughs> Gary, yeah. you know I have mad respect for you, man, and I wanted to bring you in because I wanted to talk about a little about you know the sounds of blackness and just your history. How long have you been working with this group, brother? That's a most appropriate question. Uh, and as of last month, uh, we are celebrating our fiftieth anniversary. So we, we, Sounds of Blackness started at, at my alma mater, McAllister College. Always. <laughs> oh, believe me, they will appreciate that. And, and uh, you know, <laughs> shout out to McAllister. But that was January of 1971, Jeff. And now, so fast forward to, to January of 20. Uh-oh, you mute yourself, brother. Hold on. And uh, by the dedication of uh, wonderful uh, singers and musicians over the years. And the, the third component is by the, the support uh, of, of p amazing people like yourself, because, you know, if we can make all the music we want, but if it doesn't get recorded, you know, and produced and put out there and mixed and mastered and all those wonderful things you did then and do now, uh, the people won't hear it. So, you know, we send that love right back to you, brother. <laughs> I appreciate that, Gary. But, you know, let's keep it real. You're a genius, and uh, there's just really no two ways about that. I mean, I, I've been in a situation with you where I've seen you just work on literally all kinds of music. And I was showing this picture earlier, and I want to show it again because it's one that I took out of a frame to to, uh -huh. to scan for this purpose because I keep it on a in a frame on a wall because this is the maestro at work right here. That's Gary Hines that I know. Hard at work and just knowing the tenors parts, the altos, everybody, everybody's part, boy, and just calling people out left and right. I'd be sitting there, Gary, be like, stop, you know, <laughs> point right at the singer. They know who was wrong and we could continue. But you've been doing that for over 50. How long have you personally been involved with the sounds, Gary? Doing what uh, well, this, like I say, as of last month, uh, 50 years, brother. Unbelievable. Yeah, Unbelievable. yeah man. And you're still a young man. Bless you, brother. You know, <laughs> your check is in the mail, baby oh, boy. Oh, man, you know. Gary, we, we, we did some cool stuff together. And, it, you know, listen, I, I don't, you know, and this, with this show, my goal is to bring you on and just bring you from out behind the curtain and let people see who you are and kind of, you know, touch you and talk to you, ask you questions if they want to. I'm not by any means claiming any responsibility for your success because it would have happened without me. I'm just one of those little stars that happened to pass through that galaxy that you pulled in and said, let's, 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 you know, put our heads together and do something great for the people. And we did it through music. Oh, brother, you know, like I say, uh, by, the, by the grace of God and by dedication of people like yourself, man, and, and uh, man, I, I know you haven't forgotten because you got a mind like a computer, but the hours we put in, man, man. you know, it's just the, the, the brief interludes when we would, you know, run to uh, uh, TGI Fridays yeah. or to Byerly's and get something to eat because we were like famished yeah. after like 12, 14 hours yeah. and then go back. Well, we had to, we had to <laughs> mix it. We had to mix it when it was done. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. You made it. Now we got to mix it. 
So, Got it mixed. So there was always a lot of work. That, that's for sure. We spent a lot of time, a lot of time together, Gary. And then and then we managed to do some work outside of there and, 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 and as well. Right, right. <laughs> Which you, is interesting. At that Bad Jeff studio, at your home studio, yeah. man. Yeah, it was doing crazy. Out there and, and the, like some of the side projects that you put up that I had almost forgotten about. Oh, I mean, don't the forget Andrew those. Lewis. Don't forget those. And, uh, and, and uh, the, the Rosa Parks piece, um, you know, tribute. Uh, the Elton John tribute oh, uh, CD is like, don't oh my! The, hey, don't forget the Curtis Mayfield tribute. Curtis Mayfield, yeah. right? And yeah, Man. Rosa Parks, and then don't forget the World Cup Olympic uh, deal. <laughs> don't forget that. We put in yes. some work, man, and that's and that's what that's amazing to me, and it's amazing stuff. And and you allowed me to get my live chops by li by taking me on the road. I'm sorry. I know I never told you sorry, but I am. I love you. No, brother. No, thank you, man. That's right. Brother, we Ooh. on the road. You talk about on the road, My in goodness. the air, halfway oh. around the world in Japan. Japan. You know? You know, one of my yeah. fondest memories is sitting down at us at a and they carved up a cow for us and they and they cooked it right in front of us and served I, mean, I was like well japan is the bomb then i woke up in the we traveled during the night i woke up in the in the, in the morning and the, out the window was mount fuji or something really really gigantic covered with snow and i'm a city right. boy it was like what the heck but you know that for me that trip didn't go as i hoped it would because i know i ended up leaving early and part of the reason i left early because it was because of my own immaturity and stuff like that but i was i had a chance to mix at the budokan the biggest place in japan one of the most renowned places in the world and i let my personal feelings get in the way of uh, a misunderstanding the communication from some japanese people etc cetera, etc cetera. so i apologize to you for that doc and, and while we're on it let me apologize for the for the whole hbcu thing because you know i know we went out on washington we was out there on tour one time and we was about to go live i had we was about to go live about to hit set number one and the guy the engineer was just rude he just he was he was he hated us for whatever reason and right before we went the first song all the low end was going out of the house gary you remember this and i, I and, did. and at the moment the guy walked by the council i just i saw too many action movies because i don't i remember diving over the council at this guy and just wanting to really i don't know what i was going to do with his head when i got it off gary but i wanted his yeah. head because the perfection that i know that goes into the rehearsals into the recordings and everything it's got to translate to the live show and in that moment right. I, so i'm sorry i'm sorry gary. That's no idea. brother you don't owe any apologies man it, you know it, it's 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 that passion brother you know for what we do yeah. and like i said had no idea that the hours we put in we know yeah. you know yeah. and uh so bro you have nothing to apologize for i am eternally grateful i love you man so jimmy and terry man jimmy and terry lewis you've had a long relationship with those guys still working oh, with them today man hits yes hits tell me about that how's that going it, it it's great man i'm so glad glad you, you brought that out for all the listeners because uh people don't know the background i mean uh before jam and lewis were house told names around the world uh, in the 70s when they were still in the flight time band uh you know with alexander o'neill who started by the way with sounds of blackness as you know kind of thing when he moved from mississippi back in we're talking about the 70s you know and jimmy jam would uh was a dj down at the fox trap you know and and your boy you know would, would be a, a bouncer at the fox trap okay but we go back that far terry lewis you know was all state football and track i mean north high school so we right. go back that far uh you know and, and prince of course you know was all city basketball people thought that was made up it's like you know and that was playing every instrument even back in junior high school so all those right. days man playing the north side festival together and then long story short when they did come into the international prominence and 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 you know got that shot they never forgot about us man and 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 i love the first thing because uh, this comes up often in interviews i'll never forget the first thing jam and lewis when we, they call me into that office which you know very well that office out at flight time <laughs> uh they, they the first thing they said was the exact opposite of what the the industry usually says the industry usually wants to 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 change and 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 mold artists into the flavor of the month kind of thing and and jam and lewis said the exact opposite they said doc don't change a thing we want to present you all to the world just the way you are mm -hmm. And and and, and, what, and, and I know you you recall this. Isn't that amazing, man? Yeah. And the other piece of it was, and, and this was the funny part. We we can laugh about it now. Um, when when uh, you know Polygram at the time, as you know, was, was the number one uh, distributor in the world, and they were the parent of A and M. 
who is the parent of Jam and Lewis label Perspective Records. And I know when 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 the uh, Perspective when uh, Polygram and AM did the deal with Jam and Lewis, who were at the time working with the biggest acts in the world. I mean, when I say George Michael and, and people, you know, we know he you know had a downfall and that kind of. But at the time, he was the number one pop artist on the planet. You know, so so Jam and Lewis, as you know, were working with him and Human League and and and. Uh, uh, Janet and Michael, and I'm sure that Polly Graham and AM had the expectation that, well, you know, they're going to lure them over to respective records. But who's the first act they signed? <laughs> this 40 member ensemble singing all over the place, di different kinds of called the Sounds of Blackness. And, and Polly Graham was like, the Sounds of who? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know they're looking for Janet or Michael kind of thing. But, 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 but as you, your question properly infers, shout out props to jam and lewis they never wavered on that you know there were people that were uncomfortable with the name as there still are some today but they said nope no, ain't none of that changing kind of thing but right. then you were there yeah. when optimistic went number one and then everybody's sticking their chest out you know at oh, a and yeah. m and polygraph oh big deal then <laughs> big deal yeah you got to make people believe you know how that is but you know you can't deny when Black you hear that rhythm you know they were <laughs> even starting the word the blackness like what radio was like wait a minute what did he say he right. said something about blackness. That's a weapon, you know? <laughs> right, right. But you know what's funny, too, man? Because uh, speaking of that little piece, man, it, it's just so great talking because you know all these nuances and details. Uh, a million times, Jeff, uh, people have come up, or even away from interviews, people have said, whose voice is that? And they remember at the time on A&M, you know, both uh, um, Isaac Hayes, and Barry White mm. were on the A and M right, label, right, and so right. they figured it was that bass baritone. Who is that? And I remember clearly, as I'm sure you do, said, "No, that is Jimmy Jam with a cold." Yes, that's Jimmy Jam. <laughs> right, and I remember he had a horrible cold at the time. He did, so it's like, but people can't figure out who that voice is. Right. That's that's see, that's the behind the scenes. That's the stuff people ain't behind the scenes. Yeah, he's, yeah. You, know, you know, Jimmy used to sing those demos. So you know, remember the late night demos? Jimmy being there singing his own demos, <laughs> boy. You know, you couldn't listen to it, but it was a hit later on when the singer got on it, without question, man. But no, right. your, hey, man, your your work with those guys has been, I mean, you you have locked, you, you, you know, Kirk Franklin, Gary Hines, mm -hmm. right? Fred Hammond, you know, there's a, you know, but you guys got gospel R&B on lock, had it on lock, then had it on lock. Oh, bless you, brother. You know, we, uh. Going speaking to McAllister again, back to the McAllister days, man. When we took on the name Sounds of Blackness, uh, we even as, as students then were, were so serious about it, you know, about representing the the totality of the music, you know, that God has blessed us with as a people. And so, you know, I, I tell the church folk all the time, some of whom don't understand that you can't appreciate the glory, hallelujah, of the gospel without the pain of the blues and the spirituals and, and the complexity of jazz. It's all part of our legacy and heritage and our cultural testimony as a people. Uh, so we we were serious then and we're, we're just as serious now and will be tomorrow about uh, living up to that name, Sounds of Blackness, every sound of blackness from, from hip hop to bebop, rock and roll, everything in between. Well, I know that's true because boy, we, we've done some very experimental recordings over the years and, uh, for for clients like you know Andrew Lloyd Webber and 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 Disney, remember the whole Disney thing? We did the whole John Henry project. Uh oh, I lost it. there you go. Um, that was amazing. The John Henry project was an amazing thing because it, it was an animated cartoon. I don't I, I don't know what eventually. I saw it eventually. I know that some changes happened, but that was an amazing project for us to be involved in. It it really was, man. And and uh, you know some of the amazing facts and like you say the behind the scenes thing about it mm -hmm. um animation uh and just just for for your listeners and followers to understand um uh what i know you already know of course because you you do it you make it happen uh in live action films music comes last is the last edition in animation mm -hmm. music comes first mm -hmm. so remember speaking of demos we had to demo oh, up man. all those songs and we was okay you're shaking your oh, head yes. I can see oh man Good and Lord. those endless Ooh. demos to Disney, you know, kind of thing. Because, yeah. uh, and just so, again, so that the, the, the listeners understand, the animators, you know, the people who are, are doing the drawings and they're doing demo dra drafts and all that kind of thing, have to have some music to draw to. Right. So right. that's why the, in animation, the music, you know, comes first. So 
the endless demos kind of thing. God bless you for your patience and perseverance, brother. Um, but but that 10-minute animated short took a year and a half. No. Uh, remember, yeah, we yes. were on that for a minute, brother. Yeah, we were on that. Uh, and, and, you know, it just goes to show how things work. And, and then I'll, I'll wind up to answer your question on, on the whole John Henry. Um, when the project was initiated, the, the uh, executives at the time had major plans for it. You may recall, Jeff. I mean, they were going to do like oh, yeah. John Henry educational program and merchandise. And, and they were going to reinstitute. And I thought this was so cool. And I remember this clearly. Um, back, you know, when you and I were growing up, you know, uh, you know, I mean, as kids kind of thing, back, we both native New Yorkers, you know, uh, going to going to Lois Theater or RKO kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There was like a five or 10 minute animated short in front of the feature, mm -hmm. you know, and then they went away with that. They were going to reinstitute that, right. uh, you know, with, with John Henry and yeah. put it in. In fact, the movie they were going to put it in front of was was uh, Denzel, remember the Titans. Uh -huh, okay. uh -huh, Great uh -huh. idea. Everybody uh -huh. all excited. Well, some new executive comes in and, and basically says, uh, that's too much blackness in one movie. You know what I mean? Yes. Oh, right. I mean, they didn't put it this way, but, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah. It, so and it's like you know, have a, a, a black, you know, animated hero right. and then have a, a black, you know, um, protagonist, you know, in, in, in uh, Denzel in the movie kind of thing. It's like, really? You know, so it got released later and it didn't get get the uh, uh, promotion and publicity that it was originally uh, intended to have. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it was an amazing yeah. time. And I, and I remember them flying all of us down over to Disney and, yes. you know, and so <laughs> forth and treating us really great. So it wasn't all bad. It wasn't all bad. Oh, no, 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 no. Not at all. Bad. Not at all. Oh, they, hey, man, you know. So you st you're still living in Minnesota. You're still living. So how come? I mean, uh, Jam and Lewis moved to L.A. Everybody moved to L.A. or New York or I'm in Florida. Why are you still in Minnesota, man? Tell me why you're still there. Well, brother, you know, um, primarily because uh, my, my family's here, my, my sisters, my extended family, my nieces and nephews kind of thing. Uh, and, and because Sounds of Blackness is here, you I know. know. I, just, I knew the answer already. I, I just wanted the people to know. You already know. So, uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're the most dedicated brother, man, and I really appreciate you. You remember the time that we worked on the Andrew Lloyd Webber project and Andrew Lloyd Webber pulled up in a limousine to the front of my house, Gary, and came into my basement? Yes. <laughs> yes. That was and, – and, oh, and, and you, you know, with that computer memory of yours, you'll remember this because remember, man, I'm, I'm scared of this dude. He flew across the pond, you know, in his private jet. Remember that? Yes. Because it, he was going to, you know, be in the studio and yeah. then, you know, find it, what we did. And you remember he actually got mad at his manager and stuff when he heard, came and heard the quality of what, what you had already recorded right. kind of thing. I, he got on his phone and was like, who brought me here? Why do I have to do this? Right. These folks know what they're doing. They got this kind of oh, thing, man. you know, but. But I remember he was really cool. But I remember, I remember thinking that that was really hilarious. That, that was he, amazing. You know, I said, yeah, I know who he was. I mean, I'm from I'm a New Yorker. Right? I mean, it's Andrew Lloyd Webber. He's the <laughs> biggest playwright in the history of Broadway musicals, and there he is in a limo, you know, coming into my house and people, you know, yes. it, uh, whatever. Come on in. But I know he has sent his guy over, Nigel. We worked with Nigel. Remember Nigel, right? Nigel. Yes. So we worked a lot with Nigel on a whole lot of uh, the stuff, you know, that he was going back and forth with him. And I guess Nigel reached a point where either he couldn't hear it anymore or whatever. And eventually they had to send him over and he comes over and that was uh, and that was that. But, you know, I think God, that, you, that went well. Your memory never ceases to amaze me. I had yeah. almost forgotten about Nigel, but uh, no, he really. Yeah, cool yeah great man. guy. A great guy. But, but that's the, that's the kind of work for me. That, this is why I want to talk to you, Gary, and I want to just talk to you and show people, tell people about you, because the, I've, I've been exposed through working with you to Stevie Wonder, Quincy Jones, like Oprah, Michael, you know, Kirk Franklin, Yolanda Adams, like on and on and on, because everybody wants to hear the sounds of blackness singing behind them in some way or another. So when you, you know, right, that's don't they? They want to hear the sounds. Eventually, they we need a choir. Then they go, we need the sounds. Right, right, right. And it, to us, it's not even the sounds of blackness. It's just the sounds. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's funny you say that because I was sharing this, uh, uh, Jeff, with, with, with some of the, well, by our standards, comparatively newer members of sounds yeah. uh, at a couple of rehearsals or so ago. Um, somehow we, we got to talking about the Luther Vandross tour. And and you'll remember this, and this is a get. Man, we we dropping all kind of little known facts on on your show, brother. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do I it. Mean, That's I, what's up. 
said in other interviews. Um, but at the time, I remember it was really wild because Jam and Lewis called me into the office. You, you remember how they would do. And they said, Doc, and he, these calls came in the same day to their office, you know, when, when they were, you know, basically overseeing us kind of thing. And in the same day, we got calls to join the tours of Luther Vandross mm -hmm. or George Michael, okay? So now on, if on the strictly business side and just straight up financial kind of thing, again, I'll remind your, 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 your followers that, that uh, you know, don't think in terms of George Michael and decline and all that kind of thing. At the time, at the risk of repetition, he was the number one pop artist right. on the planet. That's right. Okay. And he wanted sounds, you know, in the worst way. Again. And, it, you know, it's life works that way. It's either feast or famine, right? <laughs> right so then, right. you know, and then uh, Luther's going on the Power of Love tour with Sinbad and Lisa Fisher. You know, I want the sounds kind of thing. So Jam and Lewis, you know, call me in and say, Doc, we got a dilemma. You know, <laughs> so, but it's obviously the kind of dilemma you want to have. But long story short, uh, uh, they they recommended, and of course we we agreed that while George Michael would have been you know more money and actually you know more exposure just because again you know, of, of how how huge he was at the time that in terms of the long haul and in terms of of our audience kind of thing and, and culturally and all that that Luther actually you know was the was the way to go right. and and Luther's tour was but sponsored by Bud Light which which wasn't no joke either. Right. You know, but uh, came in the same day, brother. But they, you know, the consensus was that, um, you know, George Michael would be more money and so on and so forth. But but the the best career move was to go out with Luther and send that and so right. forth. Good. Yeah. So you you've done a bunch of albums, Gary. You've done a bunch of albums and a, and a, you've just been everywhere, man, in terms of, you know, getting out there uh, performing with King for kings and queens and presidents and stuff like that all over the world. It's been quite a journey for you, man. How how much longer you you ever plan to retire from the sounds? Or are you gonna gonna do it until until forever? Yeah, well, the latter, brother. You know, I take another uh, page. I take many pages out of the book of Duke Ellington. And when when Duke was asked when he was gonna retire, uh, he would say never because he would always say, "I would rather wear out than rust out." <laughs> Hey, and yeah. I'm and I'm just doing like this interview thing. I I don't even if somebody asked me that I couldn't even answer that question, Gary. So I know you <laughs> right. don't know because I know you too. I know you well. I know you don't know what to retire. What? <laughs> I, I hear a melody right now. What do you mean? You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. But I already know. You know man, how it go. You know so. You know, Minneapolis and the reason, and that's another thing. I'm an interviewer, so I asked you why you're living in Minneapolis. I know why you're there as well. And I remember having just fond times with memory. I remember your mom. I remember meeting your mom, Gary. And I remember after meeting her, I after and I went to a football game. We went to a football game together, and and she slides into the seat next to me. Within 15 minutes, I knew why you were who you were. I was like, this woman, <laughs> yeah, this is a woman right here. Yep. <laughs> she was something. She was amazing, Gary. And you got rest in peace and God bless her, man. Um, she was a strong Thank role you model for you. Yep. Yeah, she 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 adopted you, brother. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Now man. she was a singer also as a as a youngster. You grew up listening to her sing, learning to play the piano to support her in a sense, yes? Absolutely, you know, and, and uh you know, giving props to her memory, you know, because Doris Hines uh, was an uh, internationally renowned in her own right. I think I, I you'll remember this because you remember everything. Uh, she uh, set the the uh, the path for us in terms of international travel because she was the first to go to Japan several wow. times. Uh, yeah, she performed Japan, Australia, uh, Canada, throughout the United States. Um, with with speaking of Duke Duke Ellington, uh, oh. Sarah Vaughan, wow. Nat King Cole, uh, uh, Sarah Vaughan. Um, it, I mean, it just the list just goes on and on and on, you know, and. Uh, so she paved the way, literally and figuratively. That's amazing. That's your heritage, bro. That's where you come from. Yeah, yeah, it is, brother. Let's talk awards, man, because you won a whole lot of them trophy things. You won a <laughs> whole lot of those trophies, boy. You know what I'm talking about. You got Grammys. You got stellar awards. I got war. I got awards all over the house from the sounds of blackness. I got a. I got. I, I got a. I'm looking at a, a NAACP Image Award over here. We got plaques, so lots of trophies, man. Where do you put all of those? You know, it's funny you say that, man. But 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 here's the the heart of it is is is, is this, uh, Jeff. Many of them are at Sabathony Community Center, 
okay, on display there rather than, you know, uh, here in my apartment or, you know, uh, any of the members kind of thing. And we do that to share with our community and, and, and show the love back to the community that birthed us and supported us, you know, when nobody knew who we were. So that, you know, young black kids and, and, and kids of all backgrounds can walk through Sabathia Community Center, you know, and, and look at the trophy case that have never seen a Grammy before kind of thing, but they can see, you know, and not only that they're seeing and sharing something up front for themselves, but that look, this came from this community mm -hmm. and that can help lift them up and give them a sense of pride. That's incredible. And that's what it does because I know that if I had any aspirations to sing and I walked through and saw all those awards, I would definitely think, wow, I need to, I need to figure out how to get into this situation right here. Who are these people? And where are they located? <laughs> You know, um, a little while ago, it's been a while since I saw you, but I, I, when I did see you, it was a, the, the timing of everything was crazy because we lost Big Jim right around the time I saw yeah. you. When I popped in to see you, I was in Minneapolis for a wedding, and it was just so weird that he all that happened at that time, and, and I couldn't Same be there. Time. It was just so nuts, and it. But it, but you know, I, I know that. When Big Jim started in the early days, I was there when Big Jim. I think we we arrived on the same day. I think to be honest, thanks, so, brother. That's, that's kind of how it felt, anyway. Right. But um, he was a he was an influential influential member to that group and offered a lot yeah. of a lot of real live and studio substance to you and to the group over the years and it was yes, a, he did. along with Ann Nesby not to not to mention the Queen yeah. Ann Nesby out to Ann you oh, know and, and and now I you know got your Alicia on your hands oh my God yes yes so you know never it, it, out of I'm breath so that out man Jeff because really we used to some years ago we used to joke about. Uh, Sounds of Blackness Next Generation, right. but now that's a reality. I mean, oh, there's a number of our current members who are offspring of original members. You know, know. like you talk, Anna and Amicia, um, uh, and then uh, um, Lacey, yeah. uh, her mom, Joanne, I don't know, who we lost just like a couple oh, of months ago. Um, but yeah, so the sec second generation went from, from uh, concept to reality. Mm, that's incredible. Yeah, man. And, and it, there's with so many members, I don't see how that could ever change. I mean, there's always going to be a lifeline of Sounds of Blackness members and, and, and you know, to, to come on into the group. And those they're, they're passing those singing genes on down the line. Those some, those some singing people. You, you, you got to be able to sing to get into the Sounds of Blackness. That's one thing that people <laughs> that we're not saying here. You just don't walk up there and be like, hey, I'm cute. No, you got to be <laughs> able to. Can you sing like Corey Cotton? Right. Okay. Because now, you know, she would love saying that too brother oh and, and, and it's, it's so voice. appropriate to bring out the lineage because um you know from 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 ann nesby you know who i know would want me to send you her love like we, we're in pretty regular touch you mm -hmm. know her and tim mm -hmm. and i um from ann to jamesia and listen when when you know ann's early years with sounds there was this pesky little girl running around rehearsal kind of thing and and trying to sing all the parts you know, give it a couple of years. Next thing, she's really singing all the parts and telling the adults when they they wow. did sing a wrong part. <laughs> and the next thing, you have Jamesia. Well, fast forward a few years from that, Jamesia has this little baby, uh -huh. you little pesky little girl running around trying to sing all the parts and do the choreography. <laughs> and next thing you know, same pattern. A couple <laughs> of years later, she's like singing it for real. Wow. Well, fast forward a few years. And she is a finalist on American Idol, and I'm talking about Paris, right. man. So the way you worded that in terms of lineage was, was literally the case. That's an amazing. It's we, yeah. we're, we're we're so blessed in terms of the people that we have rubbed shoulders with in our in our efforts to record music uh, and mm -hmm. to pursue a dream and a career in music. I mean, we've been really blessed. Magical singing voices, like and yes. and musicians, like all the way around. We we've been exposed to some of the best and. And I don't ever want that to die. And and for me, no. seeing you play the piano. Now, Gary is a guy that when you go to get a synthesizer for Gary, you don't you can get a bunch of synth, a bunch of synths if you want to, but you better bring a big 88 key hard stone keyboard there with some weighted keys on that jaw, because that's what Gary needs. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, but you know, it's always a pleasure for me to work with you, man. It's been an absolute pleasure, Gary, to to know you and 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 work with you. I've never seen you. I've never seen you raise your voice at anybody in that group ever in all the times that I was in session with you ever. Never lost your cool, bro. Well, bless you, man. Uh, maybe every now and then, but uh, <laughs> it's so, so funny, you know, some uh, of the, some of the, 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 the veteran members like, uh, like Carrie Harrington, I know, you know, Carrie, oh, Carrie, yeah, my God. They, yeah they, they tell, they tell the current members, 
you guys got it easy. He used to be mean. Oh, it's yeah, like, right. it's like, was I mean? And they say yes. I said no, I wasn't mean. So they 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 always. It's almost like you know when when uh, they say that that the, the, the grandparent uh, you know is kinder to the kid. You know right. that whole thing, the yeah. succession thing. Yeah. So uh, they they tell the the current people that that they got it easy in terms of that. But you know we hopefully try to keep a level head. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I think you've just, I think in terms of how hard you work, probably you, you work them probably, maybe they got it easier. Maybe you're taking it easier on them because this is a new generation now. You can't work them the same way you used to work those other kids. No, it, it, you really can't. <laughs> they walked out of the session on you. Right. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm done. Yeah, right. But, but you know, I know you love what you do, man. And uh, it, it, for me being there and sneaking up on you after not having seen you in person in a few years and seeing you rehearsing the group and being there with them and, and just in seeing Pat Lacey and Carrie and all of the people in the group that I haven't seen in years, you know, Billy Steele. that's, you know, Bill. I haven't seen Billy in forever. And Billy is a, is a key member of the sounds of blackness and just somebody yes, who is. is just so amazingly talented that yeah. it was a joy working with you and Billy for all those years. We can't leave Billy out because Billy was often oh. either right or left in every situation in there. You know? We would want all, uh, all everyone that's on to know that, that Billy Steele, native of Gary, Indiana, uh, is and has been for many years now assistant director of Sounds nice, of Blackness, nice. uh, an absolute beast on the keyboard. Oh my goodness! And goodness. of course, uh, vocals and production, uh, all of the above kind of things. So shout out! In fact, literally this time last night, I was blessed to be with Billy. Uh, a pre-record it was a virtual for a church service. He he's minister of music at uh, Fellowship Baptist well, over Northside. You okay, remember? Also, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, yeah, he's minister of music there. And uh, I was a guest over there last night. We did a combination of a, a mini workshop, uh, you know, to taught them some spirituals, you know, some black history stuff kind of thing. And then they incorporated into the service uh, that they uh, uh, pre-recorded last night. But so 24 hours ago, man, and I know Billy would want me to send love, brother. Awesome, man. I love that dude, man. And that whole family, the Steel family, super talented Steel family. So great, you, great. Everybody yeah. knows you from the albums and the and the Grammys and the optimistic and everything, Gary. But you but you also put you, you know you put on a Christmas show every year in many in Minneapolis, a, 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 like a play a week long or two week long run and play. Don't you tell me about that? The night before Christmas, a musical fantasy uh, is what you're referring to, and uh, this year was the 42nd anniversary of that. Um, you know, and and the the foundation of that man is. Uh, growing up uh, in New York, as I mentioned earlier, as you did as well, one of the thing, many things you and I have in common. Um, and my mom, who, who you uh, graciously referenced a little bit ago, uh, one of the things she would always do around Christmas time is, is, is read to us. Uh, Twas the night before Christmas went all through the house. And so it was always a favorite of mine, even as a kid. So fast forward to 1978. Um, and, you know, the good Lord just, just sent this vision, man, of... Uh, this poem that I knew and loved, which is the actual title of the poem is A Visit from St. Nicholas. I mean, the, the colloquial uh, reference is, is uh, The Night Before Christmas. And I'll never forget, man, right here in this apartment, man, for three days, Jeff, uh, three days and nights, I was up as this, this outpouring, uh, a, a gift of bringing The Night Before Christmas to life uh, in terms of what it would be like on the black side, you know, in a contemporary urban black family, what would happen, you know, if, if Santa Claus re not only really existed, but came into the house, came down, and, you know, up in your house at midnight, you know, you know, what, what would all that be, you know, and, and what would, how, what would the interpretation be uh, on the black side? Mm -hmm. You know, would it be uh, the children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums dancing in their heads? Or would it be the children who nestled all snug in their beds while visions of chitlins danced in their head? <laughs> and then oh. you dance out some chitlins in costumes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and so it, it's amazing you say that because they're actually, uh, just this past year, we, we did a virtual concert version of it um, on Broadway On Demand. So where we did uh, songs from the show and had some visits from the characters in costume and that kind of thing, but not the full play and dialogue. But that has generated some some off Broadway interest in the show, oh, nice. uh, and you know we we were blessed to to tour uh, the Christmas show um, back in like uh, mid to late '90s. We did it at the Apollo a uh, weekend uh, sellout. We did it at the Regal in Chicago nice. and at the Fox in Detroit. Wow. Um, and, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the theater uh, in DC. The theaters in DC and Baltimore, 
But uh, so there's a clamor for that to happen again. So hopefully as things open back up, you know, in, in a long shot for 2021, but probably more realistically 2022, nice. uh, that we can put the night before Christmas back on the road again. So everybody can see uh, the dancing chitlins, the singing socks, yeah. Rudolph the rapping reindeer, and Santa Claus and his eight fine reindeer. Insane, insane. You know, I've seen it and I've enjoyed it. I've seen it every year for probably like four or five years in a row when you were doing it mm -hmm. in St. Paul. And it's a great show yeah. and just a chance for those talented people to shine, man. Everybody shine. Yeah. It's amazing. And, and brother, the other thing too, man, that, that's so beautiful. Uh, two things I'll just say real quickly, just uh, end up this piece about the Christmas show. One is, uh, in terms of our, Sounds Blackness, our first uh, uh, album back in McAllister days was called Images of Blackness. We knew how important then and we know now how important images are. And man, to, to, to do the show and have, you know, like people of all backgrounds there, mm -hmm. but especially our young, you know, black boys and girls come up and up to us and say, you know, when I grow up, I'm going to be a reindeer. You know, it's like, I mean, priceless, legitimate right. theater. And, and, and uh, one other a quick story. That, that's really funny. Um, at St. Peter's AME that had the day period, okay, remember St. Peter's over mm -hmm. South? Yep. Um, every year they would have a show and tell for the kids and uh, the kids would, you know, talk about what their parents did and all that kind of thing. So again, long story short, uh, uh, Bill Smith's uh, youngest son was there and it was his chance. He was like maybe eight or nine years old. Um, and it was his chance, you know, to tell, you know, what his dad did. Now, Bill works uh, for the city of uh, Minneapolis as a housing inspector, right? So he's telling everybody that, and I'll never forget, I got there late just in time to hear his son talk about, you know, uh, his dad, you know, being a housing inspector. And one of the kids next to me said, but he's really Santa Claus. <laughs> it's like, just, I mean, in terms of images, mm -hmm. just priceless, bro. That's funny. You know, Gary, yeah. I, I see, I know the effect you're talking about. I've seen you have that. I've seen the group have that on people. And, you know, being in Japan and touring and all those places that we went in the different parts of the world where people were, oh my God, ecstatic. Remember, the, Gary, do you remember this Martinique? Remember the outdoor party that was so oh, big that, that they, <laughs> oh my God, there was, yes. there were thousands and thousands of people out there and they had to, they had to squeeze us all through one by one to this stage. Right. Oh my God. That's for, man. I forgot that you, you know, now, I, I love your memory, brother. Yeah. And remember we had to take what, like three flights to get to the oh island. Oh my gosh. Jump, jump, oh, pop, pop. Goodness. But it was worthwhile. Cause I remember that water oh. being almost turquoise, you know, in blue. Yeah. And, and the honor of it, brother. Yeah, uh, it, was it, it was nice. Just, I remember specifically now that you say, and thank yeah. you for, 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 um, for uh, um, pricking my memory <laughs> is this was the, 150th anniversary ah. of their liberation. That's right. And they wanted the sounds of black. I mean, they could have got anybody. It was a big deal. Yeah, a really big deal. What a party. You, know? that just, you just don't ever forget yeah. a party like that. Oh man, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they did their commemoration, and then the party was on. Yeah, right? man, what an incredible time, man! What a yeah, Gary, so much for us to talk about, man. I, I could talk to you forever, but I want to talk about some new music because I know you're still working on new music. You got new projects. Yeah, sure. you, you're always in the studio. Your voice was was really kind of uh, you know being heard during the social uh, the social uh, Black Lives Matter you know stuff that was going on in, in in social media. I was hearing your cries and your pleas to the people, and the sharing yeah. of your music and your quotes, man. And uh, new music, man. I'm glad to hear that you're still working. Yes, sir. God, well, you know, it, it's, it's what we do, man. It's what's given to us, you know. In fact, uh, I, I subscribe to words of of a great late country artist, Chet Atkins. Uh, he was a great songwriter, and 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 his interviews, uh, Jeff. When he got asked about his songwriting, uh, he said something that that I believe in. He said, "There are no songwriters; all music is given." You know, and then and and, and you know that, and, and really at that point, when it's given to us, probably our primary job is not to mess it up. Yeah, you know, <laughs> right? Arrange <laughs> you know it what I nice. Mean? Yeah, arrange it nice and make it pleasant. <laughs> and, and, and as Jam and Lewis would say, "Less is more." That's Less right. is more. I know you're. That. But, but, um, get, some, get some chili sauce on. Put the chili sauce on. Right, right. That's that's Terry Lewis. Well, Terry Henry said that. Yes, yeah. it's got so, to So, um, <laughs> yeah, man, you know, and 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 uh, so we we just try to stick with that with that formula, man, because as you know, you know, it, it's worked for us. Yeah, we talked about everything, man, from the group, the years in the group, Minneapolis, those the old days, the world travels, the new music. 
Woo wee! What else is going on? Anything you want to? Anything you want to share with my listeners, Gary? Before I let you go, this is my longest interview yet, and I realize we had some technical difficulties in the beginning. And anybody that stayed with us or tuned in to see how good this turned out, I'm I'm glad you stayed with us. We are here as we are soldiers. We don't quit, baby. We don't quit. What else is good? Anything, Doc? You want to close out with here today? Absolutely, man. Um, just to elaborate a little bit more on on uh, the, the latest releases. Um, just a few years ago, we've been doing a series of singles, uh, and, and, and so, you know, you, you'd so on top of it, brother, uh, about five years ago, we, we wrote and recorded the song Black Lives Matter, and we wanted it to be an anthem, you know, for the Black Lives Matter movement, and, you know, did it in, in, in concert with the national office, uh, Sister Alicia Garza, I, I know you know that name mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, then fast forward, <clears throat> excuse me, a few years, we, we finally did a collaboration. I know you remember T.C. Ellis. Oh, yeah. At age High School for Recording Arts. People ask, what HSR rate? That stands for High School Recording Arts. Well, right in the St. Paul hood kind of thing. It's like, you know what? We're going to, speaking of second generation, we're going to involve our youth in this. Um, and TC and I had been talking for years about, you know, Sounds of Blackness and HSRA, you know, used to, to, to need to collaborate. And, you know, TC with that voice, Gary, we need to collaborate, man. You know, that TC <laughs> But I, he was seeing, I love him to death. Nice. And so we finally were able to do that. And, you know, royalty went on to, to be award winning and all that kind of thing. And now fast forward to just last year, uh, we collaborated with the HSRA again on our current single, uh, Sick and Tired. A lot of people use that expression. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, but don't know uh, its origin. That's the word. Those are the words of the late, great Fannie Lou Hamer, who Jeff, think of how deep this is, brother. She spoke those words at the 1964 Democratic wow. National Convention, talking about she was sick and tired of, of being sick and tired of police brutality and, and, and white supremacy and, and injustice and so forth. And those words ring true today, if anything, even more so. So, uh, you know, when Brother George Floyd was, was lynched, five blocks when we rehearsed at mm. Sabatley Community Center, man, five blocks, Jeff, yeah. uh, and Sister Breonna Taylor was murdered. And, and, and we could see that this is something that had gone on in, in one form or another with our people for 400 years. The, the good Lord sent those words of Fannie Lou Hamer into your boy's brain, sick and tired of being sick and tired. So that's that's the origin of it. That's and, awesome, uh, you know, we're, Jam- we're Jamesia, be- uh, shout out to Jamesia. She uh, directed the video and did an awesome job. So uh, everybody, please check out the video on YouTube. Go to our website, soundsofblackness.org.org, and we're on all the social sites, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Just go to Sounds of Blackness, and you will hear back from us. Awesome, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman right here, it means the world to me. He's he's always treated me with such kindness and such respect, man, and sometimes I didn't even deserve it. But you know what? brother i want to grow old with you man i want to grow old with you because you are truly you are truly a g before i let you go though i want to do one thing i want to i want to pop over here real quick because i want to show you who my next guest is gary watch this watch this gary my next guest Uh, are you seeing this gary get out of dodge let me let me stop this for a second we got something else going on we got the one and only Karen White, the the woman. Hey, you already know. (laughs) You already know. Man, I'm so excited to have Karen on the show. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know. I can hardly control myself, Karen, because as you know, this woman right here is a very, very talented and special lady. Yes, she is. And let me say two things. Congratulations to you for having her on. And number two, Please, I know you got a million things on your mind. Please give her my love. Of course I will, Gary. Of course I will. Ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Hines, brother. Thank you so much, Gary, for joining me on my show. I bid you adieu, my brother, until we talk again. Yes, sir, my brother. But you know what? It's not goodbye. It's so long. And like we used to say, I'm going to plant you now and dig you later. <laughs> plant you now and dig you later. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Gary Hines. Thank you so much, Doc, for coming on to my show. I can't even thank you enough because, listen, I am just a vine. Gary is a branch. 
we have to reconnect at some point in time because that's how it is. That's what we're just all going to go to dust. In the meantime, while we're alive and we got the juices flowing, we may as well connect, reconnect, get those vines and branches back together again. That's my goal. I'm trying to touch base with every person that I've ever worked with in the hopes that we can share some commonality about how what a wonderful thing it was to have that opportunity to work on music for people together. Anyway, that's all. Like I said, man, earlier today, you can get me on social media. Mad Jeff Music Show on Instagram and Twitter. Please support some of my stuff on my sound. You can go to my website here. I got a Shopify. I got some sample CDs, music creation tools for young people. Get some of this stuff. Buy some of these books, man, because you can learn a little bit about what I know, which is plenty. Plenty. I know too much. I know too much. Anyway, that's enough. You've heard me. You've heard me. You've heard me. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Hey, until we meet again, this is Mad Jeff Music. And ladies and gentlemen, this is fire right here. Careful, careful, careful. Uh, you gotta scooch out. You gotta scooch on out past the fire. Can't get burned. Not on my ship.